whether you're, uh, oh, I blew it. Okay. <laughs> whether you're stomping on villagers or seeping from the inky darkness, going clickety, clickety, click, you're bound to make a mess. Hey, that sounds like a job for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture. Every week, we invite industry folks to come on to play games and to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse. I'm your host, Peter Bryant. Joining me this week is Mike Kafis. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jack Ballard. I can't follow that up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Cooley. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And Menthias Bonici. Menthias, huh? Menthias. Did I say Menthias? Menthias. Menthias. Sorry. Did I? Bl- oh, Jesus. Here we go. Wait a minute. He got some red thighs on his mind. I'm drinking. Menthias. <laughs> mm. Menthias Bonici. Menthias. Hey, I, like I, I got to come back another time for him to get my name right. <laughs> <laughs> is a professional graphic designer and the founder of Lost Cog, an indie board game publishing company. He is the co-creator of the Viking-themed game Rampaging Jotun and the creator of the hacking card game uh, Zero Day War, which is coming to Kickstarter later this year. You can find Matthias at, uh, Lost, or, and Lost Cog at the next PAX Unplugged booth. Uh, 350. Paul E. Cooley is a mostly full, mostly full-time author. <laughs> you say full-time author, but things have changed. A mostly full-time author and podcaster from Houston, Texas. He writes sci-fi, suspense, and thriller fiction, essays, and reviews available from shadowpublications.com and iTunes. He is known for his series, The Black Derelict... Oh man, I can't. La, 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 la. Tongue not working. The Black. I can't even say the Black. The Black Derelict. The Street and Garaga. He has collaborated with New York Times bestselling author Scott Sigler on the series The Crypt and co wrote the novel The Rider. In addition to his writing, Paul has contributed his voice talents to a number of patio fiction productions. Productions! Welcome back, Paul and Matthias, returning guests. Uh, I'm glad mm-hmm. to have you back on. Especially yeah. Paul. Paul, you're like you're like a frequent flight. We get how many miles do we have to give you now? You get like a free flight somewhere <laughs> or something with this? You got a tote bag. A tote, a tote bag. bag. Okay. <laughs> so next Baltica, you just need to give me a, a tote bag with a bottle of Jameson in it, and it's all good. It's all good. Oh wow. man. <laughs> Hell yeah. I could do that. We can make that happen. We can make that happen. <laughs> can it be any tote bag? <laughs> no, it has to be a special tote bag. It has to be made of the, the skins of your viewers. Oh! <laughs> oh. oh. We have like not bode well for Mama Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> My mom and two other people. <laughs> It'll be made out of David, Ma, uh, Mama Marsh, and uh, John Ryer. Hey, yeah. Can you imagine the Thanks. bag you would make out of David? Holy shit, that would be <laughs> that would be an interesting tote bag. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, suckers. <laughs> and this has been the Mythwits. <laughs> and we've had one view so far. Now everyone is backed off. <laughs> Great. Because I won. Well, there goes all that marketing I've been doing. <laughs> I'm going to say, my wife isn't even watching. She's sitting next to me playing a video game. Oh, okay. I can see it. I can watch. What is she playing? Uh, Destiny. Oh, cool. Okay. Hey, um, if, if anybody is in the chat room, if they could just give a, uh, a shout out to make sure the sound and everything's working. I tested it earlier, but Christ almighty, you never know. Oh, shit, I never even started recording. All right. Uh, all right, working. never mind on the Zencaster. I forgot to hit the start button, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll hit it now. What the fuck? Let it go. the smoothest, you know, pre-show ever. I almost had it. Almost had it. We, you know what happened was I took we took a month off to, to reformat some stuff, and uh, I was making that part of the uh, the, the, the new setup as, as, as part of it, and I just, I don't know, I'm fucking trying to get my legs under me here. All right. Anyway, so um, before we get into... Into into our, our the short interviews that we do now, uh, I you know Jack and I were talking a little bit uh, behind the scenes about trying to you know do uh, do a little bit of pre um, like pre interview thing, uh, and Jack was talking about maybe doing a little bit of the game first. But Jack, I don't think I can work that. I was I was running through my head a bunch of times, and I was like, oh, I don't see how it's going to work just because of formatting and stuff. So I thought maybe we'd put the topic first and then go into what people do. And what do you think? Yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. So, so, so Matthias, right Matthias, you 
you uh, you did something called Rampage and Yoten, and and Paul, I know you are a history nerd, as is Jack, uh, and we talked a little bit about Norse mythology last week, but uh, I'm going to go back to it again um, because I saw Thor Ragnarok, and without any spoilers, because it doesn't need to, it's it's in the previews, the 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 Jotun Suter is in the movie, and. Uh, it's interesting because they don't refer to him as a Jotun. I, they don't even know what they were. Mike, what did they? What did they call him? Did they refer to him as anything? He's just like or was a he just Suter? God, yeah, they just called him. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So like, the premise. It's it's right in the very first part of the movie, so it's not spoiling anything. The, the premise is is that he ha- he has this this mask that he wears that if it's it's put in the eternal flame, uh, he'll become giant size and can destroy uh, can destroy do, you know do the the whole Ragnarok thing, which I was just like man Marvel is just change they just fucking slinging shit around anywhere they want. And I was like we'll just change anything. It's like you'd think Disney was running it. Oh wait, that's uh, yeah <laughs> about <laughs> but, that. But yeah, I want to I want to go to uh, Matthias. You are a Jotun expert. Uh, how big would Sutter have been in in actual uh, uh, Norse legend? Well, I mean, I was, well, Sutter. Guy's got to be easily eighty feet tall. Right. I mean, is he is he like mountain size or is he? I mean, is it like skyscraper tall or? No, well, probably small mountain size. Okay. Yeah, I'd say that they they got him right. Well, after he puts the damn mask on, he does. But, like, he starts out, like, I don't know, 20 feet tall, maybe? Well, a lot of the um, artifacts of the Asir give them special powers, make them larger, make them faster, make them wiser. Okay. Um you know, the, our planet in our sky is supposed to be made from a Jotun's itself. Yeah. Was it Ymir, I think it is? Ymir, yeah. Yeah. Which is the Jotun I actually used in the game. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's the Jotun you used in the game was Ymir. Yeah. And you, you have what? a second Jotun, right? Did you put, was it, was it Surtur? No, no, this is going to be a Frost Jotun. Okay. Right. So. What was that, Mike? I was just wondering, like this Jotun that we're breathing in the sky. What part of his body are we breathing? It's, you, you know, you don't want to know that. I, I, yeah, I kind of no. do. I, no. <laughs> I think he was really far up. I don't think you're really breathing in his stuff. I think he was just kind of spaced out there in blue. Apparently, his, his skull made the sky. Yeah. All right. The, no, cloud, the clouds were his brains or something, right? Uh. The, the oceans were his blood, the hills were his bones. I forget what the rest is. <laughs> I just need to know where his anus was so I don't step oh, in it. Jesus, there it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Too late. Uh, stepped right, right in. Somewhere it. in Jersey. Right. Yeah, right. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. All right. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you. I think we drove through that part of Jersey on the way up to um, Metatopia. So you Paul got hit by a tire there. <laughs> so what is your take on that, Paul? I mean, you do you read a lot about mythology and stuff. What is um what is your take on, on, on the whole Sutter thing, the way I don't know if you saw the movie or not, but just from what no, I'm describing, if you really, haven't. I'm really not all that up on Norse mythology. No? What? It's strange. No, no. I'm not all that up on the on Norse mythology. It just never really interests me all that much. Oh, it's because you got well. I oh, know great you, topic, Pete. All right, awesome. so thanks for coming, Paul. I uh, just, I just know Paul. Paul writes. He has a whole series. Graga. It's all based, but but you didn't get into the northern, the, the Germanic areas, right? I mean, I guess, I guess you stayed down. Be, it was like a an Assyrian god. You'd probably know it. Yeah, Mesopotamian. I would, I would have definite knowledge, but. Uh, uh nordic you know i don't know why that is i mean i remember the the stuff for odin i remember you know all the all the all that stuff that i studied but i don't remember the individual pieces of it i couldn't tell you their pantheon besides uh um you know odin thor his kids you know it's basically about all i know about norse mythology just for some reason vikings just never really interested me that much really and you look just like one how yeah, is that so? Like, if I look like a pirate, I'd probably read a book or two about him. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it does. Paul, you do. Goddamn, Jack, that is a good. That is, yeah, you do. You look. You look like a fucking Viking. 
Oh, no, I'm not nearly, uh, uh, well, give, give me like a few more weeks without shaving or bathing, and, and yeah, we'll probably get there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> like how to make a homeless guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thor, the most powerful homeless guy ever, right? Yeah, that guy. So, so let me ask you this: Well, what book would I be God reading? Get into the Northern... I know Stop that it. that that's a thing. Facebook really has some logistics to work out with this whole volume issue. Yeah, no, I was apparently. trying to. No, what I was trying to do, I was just trying to get to the goddamn chat room to see it, and. Uh, Fucking phone! It's, it's you turn it down and it turn. I don't. The thing has its mind of its own, Mike. This Apple, this Apple phone is a thing. I know. Mind of goddamn, goddamn Apple. I know. Right, fucking Apple. I know you hate Apple, right? Nope. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> Haven't heard a bitch about his phone yet, though. Nope, so that's nope, good. Nope. Look at look look. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had a fucking no Paul he had an iPhone for like a minute and all I heard all the time fucking Apple fucking iPhone fucking Earth. I don't feel like I get to watch myself kiss my phone in a delay it's kind of erotic <laughs> I might I want to try I want to see it again I just like thinking about all the germs on that fucking phone all over his face now. No. Right. It's literally like you got Bukaki by the city of Baltimore every time you kiss that phone. <laughs> go ahead, just keep kissing it. And just... I gotta go get a shot now. <laughs> Like, you know where Mike works, right? And the people that come in and out of there are like some of oh Baltimore's God, finest, right? <laughs> and they're touching oh. the doorknob, and Mike's touching the doorknob, and then he's fingering his phone, and now he's putting it up to his lips. God, God a... knows where this hand is. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Mike. Yeah. You're yes. like you're like two steps removed from from a from a, a crack pipe that came off the street. <laughs> right, <laughs> two nice. steps away from a used needle. Yeah, pretty uh, much. I know, yeah, really. <laughs> like maybe it's even Apple, one Apple Exchange <laughs> program in Baltimore City. <laughs> right. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. I all right. Really I remember reading some report about how filthy and disgusting escalator handguards were. Oh yeah. About how the the, the, yeah. the quantity of feces, uh, urine, uh, blood, yeah. and everything else that's on them is just like whoa. I think about that every time I put my hand on it. Yeah, I, I do that too. That's why I grabbed the person next to me and put their hand on it. <laughs> oh god. Even that's not removed enough. Those DC Metro ones, I swear, there was like a brown shit stain on one forever, and I would always try and time it. So I just, you know what I mean? It was disgusting. They I never don't know what you shit. mean. I've never aimed for the. Oh shit yeah, stain. you're on that Metro all the time. That Metro is disgusting. It was built in the '70s, and it, you know everything in the '70s just looked dirty. And that, and it's still, it's 2017. And it's the same Metro. It's so, it's, <laughs> it looks like it's made out of bacteria. Yes, yeah, yes, but Jack, now it's retro. <laughs> it is. It is. It's, it's almost steampunk. <laughs> shit stain chic. Shit stain chic. Hey, you know, we could. You know, remember the game we used to play with Steve Wallet where we'd pay him to eat stuff? You know, like we'd go to the restaurant. Oh. And Steve, so, so Steve didn't Steve didn't have a regular job and he was hurting on cash and he needed, you know, he needed you gas money. Throwing our friend under the bus That's so all right, bad. Right That's all right. It's all right. So we, we, would, we would go to Bob's Big Boy and, you know, they'd have this all you can eat breakfast. And so we'd go there and we'd, you know, Steve would want to eat with us, right? But he never had any money. And so what we'd do is, is we'd, we'd put stuff together into a glass. Like and it, we had rules though; it had to be food. Like it couldn't be, it couldn't be spit or cigarette butts or anything goofy like that. It had to be edible products. So it had to be like it could be like ketchup and soy sauce and like eggs and you know just a whole bunch of stuff. And we would mix this unholy concoction together, and then we would all bid to get him to eat it or drink it. And um, and you know once it got to a certain level and we finally was like, ah, all right, all right, that's it, I'm tapped out, I'm not paying anymore, right? Steve would either, you know, he'd either go for it or not or he'd say, look, kick him two more bucks and I'm in. And the rule was he couldn't throw up for 30 seconds. Like he had to hold it down for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and he only uh, to his credit he only threw up twice <laughs> so, <laughs> but he made money he made like he'd make like 25 bucks like on a Friday night so he'd go out that was like kind of one of his jobs um, you, 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 know, he, you know the difference between you and I right now 
What's that? Is what? I was a part of that, and I'm the only one who feels shame from that. <laughs> <laughs> and you do And that's putting disgusting shit in your mouth and not puking for 30 seconds is an honorable profession when you're down no, on is. your luck. No, it, really it is. is. <laughs> not, the... not fostering it. Not fostering it. That is, that's repugnant. Hey, hey, you know what? Fuck you. You played the game. You in. <laughs> Part of my dirty past. I don't. But, but, America's next reality TV show was just launched. Oh, right, God. nice. nice. Right. So I was thinking, you know, if we had, if we just, if we could find another Steve, we could pay him to like lick things out, like you know, like like guardrails and find shit. another Steve. You want me to walk outside? Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> find... I'm, just, I'm just walking around right now. I just go outside. Pay people right. lick Mike's phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 we have to be humane. <laughs> yeah, let, let's face it, that was in Mike's pocket. <laughs> and it was not very happy. Right. Sick of That's it. the sweatiest pool hall ever. <laughs> Oh my god, this oh, show went boy. completely zing! <laughs> oh, god, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dying to lose at another game. Is there, is there a game? That we, I don't know, wait, 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 no, no, no. Real quick, alright, let's, no? let's move on. Alright, so, well, <laughs> let's... <laughs> and then, let's bring it down. Alright, alright. <laughs> so, Matthias... Yeah. Hey, Matthias. Speaking of Jotuns, <laughs> what are your Jotuns eating? One fucked up segue. <laughs> right. So, would you lick a Jotun? Is that, uh... <laughs> what do Jotuns taste like? Not in Jersey, I wouldn't. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Stop it! All right, Stop all right, it. all right. So, so Ramp, tell us about Rampaging Yoden. Tell us, tell us, it's a, it's a great game. <laughs> well, Rampaging Yoden is a two-player game where you build an island, you populate it with your armies, your villages, and you try to wipe the other uh, players' villages off the map. All the while, there's the Yoden running around the board trying to crush everything, and it comes in a gigantic box. That Pete has never opened. Whoa. Uh, you haven't opened it. <laughs> I haven't convinced anyone wow. to play it yet. No, go ahead. Wow. It's for Steve. No, it's a, it's a collector's mint, edition. Mint in box. <laughs> yes. So uh, at uh, Metatopia, we were playtesting the sequel to it, which is a four-player expansion. You should have took the wrapping off, Pete. I know, right? God damn, didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah. It ruins the value. Right. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, yeah, we were testing the four-player variant uh, this weekend, well, last weekend, um, and we, it's going to be a pretty hefty expansion. Um, two new armies, another Jotun, new weapons, new armor, a bunch of stuff that we wanted to put in the first game, but just really couldn't without having you understand the core rules first. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and and it it plays. Oh my god, it's it's, it's I I swear I'm gonna play it. I just I, god, it's been on my shelf, and I can't. You know, my daughter. I can play this with my daughter because she's. I think she's old enough now. She could get it. Oh, it's we a had, pretty simple game. We had like a seven year old playing it, and his uh, older brother was reading him the cards. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, cool. So. so um so yeah I've pl I played it a bunch of, I played it before it went out you know when it was still in its prototype phase and um and I, I yeah, love the like game an hour long video you. yeah yeah it was cool Matthias was explaining it it was it was excellent and then you took it to Metatopia which you and I were at uh not this weekend but the weekend before um hanging out and and tell us about uh tell us about Metatopia your experience there uh, Metatopia is a board game developers conference um, where basically we go, we show our new games, we play test them with players, other game designers, just so that we can figure out whether or not our games actually work, uh, what they, um, what can be made better. Like last year, I brought Zero Day War to Metatopia. It was not the game that I, when, when the game that left was not the game that I brought. Um, it changed so dramatically in those three days that a year later, now I have a game that's going to Kickstarter. You know, it, right. it's, it's invaluable for designers because you are getting industry 
input, you know, and it's it's really a whole lot of fun. A lot of the, the players there are there to really help you, you know, um, and if you're looking for honest input, that's a good place to find it. Yeah, and they, they do this thing called a – so everybody who goes to Metatopia uh, is there. They know that they're, they are there for the designer. They know they're playing prototypes. They know they're playing alphas and betas and stuff. They're not there to – they are there to critique, not to criticize. So they know when they get there that it's an unfinished product, and they're, they're there to have fun, play new games, see new stuff, uh, and help you refine your game. Now you have, you have developers that go, and you have uh, basically just – just participants. So people who are not developers, they just go and have fun and play, play new games that they're not going to, you know, that aren't, that no one else is playing yet. And, um, they do a high test, which is, uh, you get a table with all, uh, all with experienced game designers and they basically play the game with you and then tell you what they would like to, you know, what they would like to see changed. Uh, and the goal of it is not to tell you how to fix it, but to tell you where they think, uh, it could be made better. And it is it it is fantastic. It is it's such an awesome event, Paul. Imagine if you you could. I don't know if you do. I guess this is what writers groups are, right? You go and you express yeah, your ideas and, and to a certain um, extent. The only problem with writers groups is uh, they they turn into criticize or they turn into uh, let me make your story my story. But you uh -huh. should write it the way I want mm. it. Right. Yeah. Well, this well, isn't that. This that was, was, was there it? are it, there is some of that in Metatopia sometimes. You know, if you have a designer who has a game that's sort of like yours, mm. then it gets a little contentious sometimes. Mm. Right. Well, yeah, that I, was I one of the biggest problems problem with, with workshops is basically something you get workshopped to death. And that was the the big joke in academia was any no, no, no story gets published after a workshop. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I gotta tell, I gotta hand it off to the, I really gotta hand it to the people who do Metatopia. That was a really it was a fantastic, fantastic event. Um, it's a little different there. Uh, the 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 crowd that goes to Metatopia is um, uh, they are, it's a different crowd. It's it's a crowd I'm not hey, used to. Nothing hey Pete, wrong. Can with I save it. you for one second? Yeah. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the chat room for a second. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nicole is asking, and Matthias, where do you hail from? Where New York, New Jersey. Okay. Do you make it up to uh, TotalCon? Uh, not in a while, but we're we're looking at going, looking at our schedule for next year for conventions that we're going to hit. Okay. So uh, because Nicole was in the chat room, she was just asking. Now, I don't know, Pete. Maybe if you wanted to be a cool friend and open your goddamn game, you could take it up. We could take it up to um, TotalCon and you could show it to uh, Nicole. You could do that. Show her, you could show Nicole your Yoten. Oh, is she? Oh, easy now. Easy. Uh, I knew the Yoten jokes were coming. I, yeah, I, when I first heard the word, I was like, oh, God. Oh, this no. is <laughs> already heard of the show. I mean, now. listen, you can keep it in the box. I don't care. I mean, you know, hey, that's I mean, putting kudos it, for having your Yoten wrapped, <laughs> right? Right. You know, at all times. But Mike, <laughs> having your Yoten in the box is what could get you in trouble. That's that's the kind of thing that gets you in trouble. Well, and then you haven't unwrapped yours or unboxed it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like to keep it warm in the box. All right. Anyway, remember, <clears throat> getting so, out of the box a privilege, not a right. <laughs> 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 oh man, this is going to be one of those. All right, what you, um, what you do with your Jotun is between you and your Jotun. Yeah, and, you and just I, don't. I guess your box, but still. But you, you definitely don't want to fire Jotun because that means something's wrong. <laughs> you need a shot. All right, you need to stop on these jokes. Okay, 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 okay. So, so yeah. you have a new game coming out, Matthias. You have Zero Day War. You said you took it there. Yep. They, they, it didn't come back the same way it went in. It went, went out the different door than it came in. Um, so, what, what is Zero Day War? Uh, Zero Day War is a four-player game. It's a two to four-player game where each player takes the um, persona of a hacker from one of the four, um, the four worlds, and you're either from Venus, Mars, Titan, or Earth. And the idea is that there's a, a, an internet in the future called the CISnet. And there's a massive solar flare, and it knocks down the CISnet's uh, security protocols for probably like a millisecond. But in that millisecond, everybody's trying to just steal as much as humanly possible. Hmm. 
And basically, after three, uh, three rounds, whoever has the most points or the most uh, files wins. Okay. And everything's done in secret. So the files are out there, and you're using your hack cards or other um, viruses, and you're going to be going from, like, hacking one card by putting it face down so no one knows what it is, and everyone else is planning. And after two turns, everything goes off at once. So your meticulously planned, you know, tour of domination is going to get wiped out really quickly. Um, and it's just about trying to outthink your other players and figure out how to get the most points. Okay. All right, fantastic. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool, actually. Uh, I played a game. I played a game out uh, at Metatopia that had um, that was a, a gladiator game, and it was it was cards, and it was a betting game. So uh, he put the 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 guy that was running it put down two gladiators, and then everybody would bet on who was going to win or lose or whatever. It depends on how you made your bet, and then you'd play cards on the gladiators to affect the match. Uh, you know, things like poison or or behind the scenes training or, you know, emperor's favor, that kind of stuff. Bribe the bookies so you could change your bets and look at other people's bets because you put the bets face down. So you don't know what people are betting. It was a really cool game. So it sounds kind of it sounds kind of similar. Is this a type of game? Is this a because uh, I know different types of games have like, you know, have like, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a designation of what category they fit into is this fit into any kind of category like some games are trick-taking games and some games are um it's a light programming game okay okay all right well fantastic uh all right paul yes you've written some books i'm actually i'm listening i'm listening to tomb right now and uh um the your, your marines they're fucked, man. They are not in a good place. They are things are not good. They haven't been good, but they're getting worse. Yes, and that's going to continue. Um, okay. <clears throat> yeah, the crew of SNR Black is pretty much they're they're high and dry and and uh, on their own and yeah, completely fucked. I'm working. I'm seventy five percent done with the uh, third book, so okay. uh, destruction should come up come out uh in the december or hopefully uh, actually uh, more realistically would be january at this point so mm -hmm. i should have it finished in the next week or two and then it will be into the press machinations but uh yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how this ends and looking forward to the body count it should be and it should be absolutely stellar <laughs> yeah and you're you're good at, at you're really good at getting people involved in bad situations and then everybody's like, you know, a couple of people get a little messed up or whatever. And then all of a sudden it ramps up into the, all right, let the bodies hit the floor. You know? <laughs> it's like, they just start ping, 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 ping. It's like Paul sit up there with a BB gun. Pew, pew. <laughs> there, there but, is a little bit to that. Yes. But you have to remember, um, I have, I have the graveyard on my site and, uh, Patreon patrons automatically get put in there. Uh, folks who um, kind of continuously converse with me and, and read the books and, and listen to podcasts, send me comments, etc. They will sometimes end up in there. Show show hosts uh, like show the Mythwits. hosts, yeah, the, the Mythwits. So I think they're <laughs> scheduled for the Black Four, so we'll see how yes. that works. Anyway, yep. oh God, I don't want to wait. I'm <laughs> I want to die My, now. Paul, Paul has already got us dedicated to the to the Black Four. He's got a spot for us. He's already carved out a nice little spot for us. Yeah, I've already written a chapter with you bozos in there. So you know. oh, nice. Oh, hey, Paul, dude, nice. for making nice. us wait so long, can we have like even just one little speaking part? Mike, don't push your luck. Anyway, oh, seriously, so, Mike, Mike so, uh, stop being Adrian, Mike. <laughs> so all the Marines. All the more, all the Marines of SNR Black are in the graveyard. There's not a okay. single person whose name I quote unquote made up. So there's some joy in taking out certain ones. Hey, I got a question for you. So, <laughs> so this this yeah. Carbonero Carbonero person, uh, she's in Scott's. She, I think it's usually she's in Scott's books a lot. Is this is this like a good friend of your all's? Like somebody you all know really well? Um, she's a uh, an original junkie. Uh, Scott okay. Sugar Junkie, and she, I met her, I guess on Twitter. Yeah, I think so, because she was part of the uh, <laughs> the evil sister in crowd. I can't even remember what they called themselves now. Uh, it was a, a group on on Scott's uh, uh, chat board on the old website. 
So they were the, the the gutter cistern or something like that. So anyway, I think she was involved in that crew. They used to give me just, oh my God. It, it we, we They would start what they called a girl pile. And that's when like all seven of them or whatever would just start this one massive insult rant oh, against you. Right. But it was, it was completely <clears throat> overpowered. Anyway, that one notwithstanding, yes, he is on both shows. <laughs> or, uh, she's in, in, been in Scott's books. This is her first time in my books. And, so, uh, you know, Callie, Callie Moore is also another one of those. Okay. So this is payback, right? For, for ganging up on you. Uh, no, this is, this is, this is, uh, if you'll, a if tribute? you'll remember, I mean, you're listening to the book. I haven't done anything yeah. too terrible to them yet. <laughs> yet. Yet. Yeah. That's the problem. Yet. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that's part of the fun of, of writing this is trying to get you to care about people and then put them in these awful situations and have you root for them. And then, well, some of them yeah. are just not going to make it out. I'm sorry, but you know, it's just like somebody put that. You know, when I saw Shrek and then the uh, uh, the king is up there and says, "Some some of you may die, but I'm willing to take that risk or whatever it is." Right. <laughs> so that's, that's what. Yeah, I saw a meme with that. It was like what authors say to their characters. And that was pretty much dead spot on. So real quick, what what is derelict? Just so people, I mean, like, as I know and you know, and, and Mike, I'm sure knows, but what what is derelict for people who are, are like have no clue? Derelict uh, is a story about the, a search and rescue crew sent to explore a ship that was sent out 50 years ago that disappeared seven years into its mission, and it's been beyond the solar system, way beyond the solar system, and it came back pretty much almost in pieces. And so they're, they don't think anybody's still alive on there, obviously, because it's been 50 freaking years. But the only thing working on it is a stress beacon, and it's just tumbling through space. So they're sent out there past Pluto to go take a look at it, and hilarity ensues. Right. And there's <laughs> there's all kinds of shenanigans going on in the background. There's there's all kinds of plotty twists and stuff, plots within plots in this thing. Yeah, I tying them up has been really difficult in this particular book because I almost want to write a book just about the trio, and right. I just uh, I'm really having to fight that that urge. It may still happen, um, and, but uh, yeah, I, and, and for, for all you out there, the trio is they're AIs. So this is in the future. This is way in the future, and uh, the the trio are AIs uh, that talk to each other, uh, and they're not talking to everyone else as well you know there are things they're not talking everyone else about well, as far as i know yeah yeah that's well yeah um yeah the three basically the the idea of the three comes from um uh if you think about government at its simplest what do you need for a consensus you need three yeah so the i the reason why that the trio is it, it's the easiest way to manage that particular deal mm -hmm. and they also have certain laws which were you know the way they operate, which is how our government should operate, is that if two nix an idea or agree an idea with an idea, all three of them have to go back and address the third one's concerns who tried to nuke it. And so they have a cooperative mentality and they're not allowed to move forward on something until they reach a consensus about what it is they're going to do. But, right. you know, the idea is basically, you know, game theory, you want to try and make sure everybody gets some of what they want. So nobody loses. And that's the way they that's the way they they operate and they function. But they are sentient intelligences, which means their own particular mores, taboos, and et cetera are not necessarily the ones they were originally thought to have. Right. So there are ways for them to get past certain laws of their programming because they're smart and they figure out loopholes. So that's 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 part of the fun of this is when we get to the end of destruction, we'll find out exactly what the hell they were up to. I, I love the sense. Speaking of the loopholes, I love like parts where you're where they're like, you know, he's he's talking to Black. So Black is one of them. And he says, uh, he's like he's like Black. What uh, what do you you know what do you know about this? He's like I can't tell you anything about that. And it's not I don't know. And it's not, it's, it's, I can't tell you about that. So read into that what you will, you know, I keep watching the language that you're using. It's like, uh, I have, was it, I, I can't, I have no knowledge on that particular, you know, it's, it's, it's very yeah, yeah. like it's very, very, very lawyer speak. Yes. Very lawyer speak when they're trying to get out of what they're doing, which is why 
some humans who are not as trusting basically look at what they're or listen to exactly what they're saying and read between the lines of what's going on, which is they're not going to tell you, but they do know something. Right. So, and and to be fair, you know, if if their programming is such that they know something, but they've been instructed by higher ups that they can't say anything, you know, they're telling the truth. They can't tell you, right? Because right. they've right. Theoretically. Theoretically, right? <laughs> no, I love it. It's it's cool. It's, it's really cool. There's there's a lot going on. It's it's very deep. Uh, it it's uh. You know, going back to the Shrek metaphors, it's an onion. There are lots of layers. And, um, Ooh, and like it. as far as I can tell, now, I guess it should be completely obvious because one of the uh, AIs is, is in one of the ships is, is the is is uh, SNR black. Uh, there are some tie ins to uh, an earlier novel you were writing, I, I think. I, it seems like it to me. I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, some some series that won me the Parsec Award or something. Yep. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You mean the black. The black. Yeah. Yeah. And um, actually, if you go back in Marines and Tomb, you will find names from the three books in there used as ship names. Okay. And then just in case if anybody doesn't back. know, the, the black is set in, in modern day times and it's sort of um, a, a thing meets the blob. Future. Is that? I call it the, the thing meets the blob meets alien on an oil rig. Yeah, that's the first. Book. Yeah, that that's just about as succinct a description as you can get. But uh, which, yeah, then it blows up from there. And what do you, what do you call those things? Those because it's it's three books that are side by side. What is that called? Uh, Parallels. Yeah, I call them paraquels. They've been called sidequels, but uh, I don't really consider them sidequels necessarily because the characters don't actually interact much. There's really only one, I guess, character that runs through two of the books, but she's not mm -hmm. in the first one. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's confusing. I, that, that is still one of those deals where I just want to go, you know, smack my forehead and go, why did you do it this way? But I um, still think it was good because you, you can still go, all right, around this time is when this, this shit is going on on the rig. And I still like that. Yeah, yeah. I've been asked if I will rewrite it, put out an edition that's all in order. And I was like, no. <laughs> No, don't 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 do that. No, 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 no. Don't do that. That'll ruin the whole aesthetic. That I mean, that that's part of the texture of the storytelling. It, I, yeah, I don't know. Don't do it. No, that's all millennial, like you know. Yeah, <laughs> these kids millennial. these days. <laughs> well, it, it's just funny because you 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 it, the one bonus of that is is that the yeah the characters on the black or excuse me on the rig don't know what's going on necessarily in Houston and the people in Houston in the second book don't know what's going on at the, in the third book. So, and then the, the most of the characters in the third book are completely clueless about what's going on, period. Well, because right. they're fucked the most. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think, I think Catfish and Sigler would disagree with you on that one. <laughs> yeah. And you turn it and, and it's lovely that you turn Sigler into a woman in that book, which is awesome. I thought yeah. it was a nice little, nice little yeah. Do you know where it came up with the first name for that? Where's that? No. The, um, Shauna Bible. Jake Bible's uh, story okay. that he wrote for the crypt. So oh, I was okay. giving him shit about that for years. So when we finally had to put Sigler in a book, I was like, okay, Shauna Sigler, here we go. Okay. And then real quick, you got one more that, that I wanted to mention. Uh, I've been, you know, it's, it's been in our pictures that have been rotating. You have, uh, you did do something with Sigler. Um, you actually, you did the crypt with him, but you really did. I mean, f for the most part, you wrote the rider and then he, you know, he kind of like put his touch on it. Um, to make sure that it was, I guess, make sure that it fit in perfectly. Yeah, put it in his voice and basically altered some of the pieces that uh, maybe he felt would work better in the universe or whatever. I mean, it's a, it's one of the it is one of those strange collaborative deals where you know basically I got an outline together, described the tech and and the games, and we got into this, and then it got approved, and then put it together, and then ask questions, and then get feedback back. Because of the process, because of how long everything took and everything else, there were some of those things that we never talked about. So when he took it back, he just like, okay, well, I'll just plug this stuff in here. Mm -hmm. So, okay. you know, he, 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 and he made it a GFL book, which is, you know, it's his deal. So, right. you know, the book, the book is what it was, what it is. It was a hell of a lot of fun to write, you know, midgets writing dinosaurs, attacking one another. I mean, you know, how, how could you possibly go wrong with that? Um, right. But space it's midgets, a, it, it's a fun book. 
right. It's a fun, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I it enjoy is that kind of stuff down right now. Mm-hmm. Right. It's 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 awesome because like you know uh, you know they're riding dinosaurs and a dinosaur can eat one of the one of the the, the little guys one of the players, and. Um, yeah. But they have this armor. Their armor is specially made to like curl up into a ball, like kind of like you know, like a roly poly, and uh, it'll sustain them until they come out the back end. So basically, <laughs> they get eaten. They go through that di- digestive tract and get shot out the back end. Has- <laughs> so- hashtag spoilers. <laughs> right. That's Literally. not a spoiler. That's but uh. Hey, but yeah, we yeah. Out the back some laxative. We got to get out of <laughs> here. Right. Chipotle so does the same thing to me. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much how Chipotle works. That's a yeah, Taco Bell. Yeah, Same Taco deal. Bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High octane. I, I should have made that joke in the writer. It'd been great. All right, go get some Taco Bell. <laughs> right. <laughs> He'll come right out. We'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, make sure everybody we're going to get ready to play the game so make sure you check out uh, Matthias Benici's stuff uh, you can find everything of his at Lost Lost Cog I'm gonna, God I can't even talk Lost Cog L-O-S-T-C-O-G dot com uh, and you can also find him is this still okay no, you sent me this recently so you can also find uh, stuff at Behance so B-E-H-A-N-C-E dot net forward slash Matthias Benici what is that Matthias what is what is uh, Behance that is my uh, on professional digital portfolio for graphic design Okay. All right. Great. Great. Okay. Um, um, and you can also find Lost Cog on Facebook. That's where I'm mostly updating. Okay. <clears throat> Using that as your as your main news out push out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think everybody does. I think it's pretty much where it goes. It's <laughs> easier to do it that way. That's where people find you. Uh, and then Paul, uh, we'll find you. you we'll, we'll find Paul at shadowpublications.com uh, you can also find him on Facebook at Paul Ellard Cooley that's P-A-U-L-E-L-A-R-D C-O-O-L-E-Y and you can find him on Twitter at Paul underscore E underscore Cooley um, to twit tweet with him tweet or tweet tweet or tweet do, do you do the Twitter much Paul are you are you a big Twitterer I still I still hit Twitter up um, I use Hootsuite to post to both Twitter and Facebook most of the time so I only have to do it in one place, but I'm not I'm not nearly as active as I used to be. Just not at all. It, okay. I'm more active on Facebook, but I hate Facebook. <laughs> really? I, oh, really I hate, hate Twitter, it. man. God, I can't stand Twitter. I can't stand it now. Back in back in the day when it was cool, right? It was uh, it was it was awesome, but then it got the noise just the signal to noise ratio got out of whack. It is right big big, big way. So. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we're getting ready to move on to the game. So I'm still learning how to do this. I think I've got it. I think I've got it working this time perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Nice. Um, hold on. Uh, let me do this. Let me get, get this here. I need to get it set up before I go. Hey, meet back here if uh, anything goes south. Just meet me back here. <laughs> we get lost in the next two minutes. Just meet back here. All right. <laughs> Okay, I don't have a good feeling about. <laughs> no, I, th- I think it's good. I think we're good. That's good. That's good. Uh, so I'm gonna. <laughs> here we go. I'm gonna switch over to the game section. No, I just I got a lot of shit running. All right, so um, so so a lot me, of uh, irons in the far. I thought, I thought Mike was supposed to help you with production. <laughs> Mm-mm. All right, so let's go into the no. game. <laughs> no, um, Somebody knows how to we... push our buttons. That's uh... <laughs> I, I, I'm the scorekeeper now. He's, he's trying he's to pull his... one of those cards out from the bottom. It's like Mithlitz Jenga. Get well, those Jack, you, know, you could always volunteer to help out. I don't know what you do on this. Oh, no, no. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you really want to see shit explode. <laughs> Jack, d- d- so Jack, what you're, Jack is. What you're telling me, Pete, is you're the only competent one on this show. Is that what you're saying? Pretty what much. Really? Yeah. Yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much yeah. All right. Yeah. Pete, you two need to never give him shit ever. <laughs> I, it's just, oh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> He right. said he said I was running a little late. I was like, "Hey, that's understandable, buddy. I and uh, no one's giving yeah, you yeah, shit yeah. for that." All right, here we go. Here we go. Let, let's yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. 
Do you need anybody to cross their fingers or do a, do a dance? Oh. What's, what's going on? Yeah. All right, hold on. I got to put that up. There we go. Hey, oh, wow. That didn't work. Okay, so it's game time with the Mythwits. I got to fix that. Uh, I'm your game master, Peter Bryant, and on this episode, we're playing Rotten Rankings. I will present to you two sci-fi movies from the past. You must guess which one scored higher on Rotten Tomatoes or if they tied. So it's higher, which one's higher or lower, or if they tied. If you get it right, you get a point. The player with the highest points wins. Real simple. Tonight we'll be playing with Mike Kafis. Hey, buddy. Um, there's there's uh, something not I know, showing. I, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. I'll fix it. Don't worry about it. That's, oh, that's what I'm no. saying. That's what's not working. You're doing but a good I can't job. Fix, I can't fix it right now. Uh, uh, not a problem. No, no, no bodies. Jack, Ball <laughs> Jack Ballard. <laughs> hey, I like the way you said tomatoes with your tomatoes. Right tomatoes. there. <laughs> hey, you guys said tomatoes. Tomatoes, fine. <laughs> You got lots of rotten, got belly raised, get some rotten rot, tomatoes. Rotten tomatoes. <laughs> tomatoes. Joe Flacco, like some Jesus rotten God. tomatoes. I'll eat them with my <laughs> daddy bears. <laughs> Watching the O's. Daddy All right. Matthias Benici. I'm still here. Right. And Paul, <laughs> unfortunately, Paul Ellard Cooley got roped into it yet again. <laughs> I'm Paul E. Cooley, and I have no idea why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going with that. <laughs> All right. So what I need to do, hold on. Oh, God, I got to get I got to get this figured out. Give me a second. Um, oh, Jesus. The score, oh, the, Jesus. Score is up. the score is looking good. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> And then I need to share this with you. Oh man, but this is fine because we're doing a. Um, there it is. So we're, we're this this month, this last month of, uh, of 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 the game and everything is um is sort of like a big test. So we're just we're doing what we're doing and and uh, we'll see how it goes. And then a, you know in January we'll come back stronger. I'll, I'll see what what works, what doesn't work, and all that kind of stuff. It's all a right, beta. so it's a beta it's, it's issue. Cool. Kind of a, it's kind of a beta. All right, so I am going to I'm going to go down the line that I have in my uh, in my my sheet here, and I'm going this week. I'm going to start with Mike. Mike, that's, that's me. Hi, how are Which, you? Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. You're doing a great so, job. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, you know we had these are the top 100 scores. Oh for uh, sci-fi movies. Now, mm -hmm. they're all going to be really close because I'm going to read you the actual score that they got. They're all going to be really close because it's the top 100. So it's going to be like one point, two points, three points between them for the most part. Uh, yeah. So so was was E.T. or the movie Brazil, which one scored higher or did they tie? Well, um, I'm going to be using my powers of uh, guessing, and I'm going to say, <laughs> against my better judgment, that Brazil whipped E.T.'s ass by a whole point and a half. Wow. Okay. All shot. Yeah. All right. All right, E.T. Well, uh, in actuality, it was a tie. No point for Mikey. They both, they both rated 98%. Wow. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting, eh? All right, Jack. Yeah. Did uh did who did better or did they tie? Iron Man or the nineteen eighty four version of Ghostbusters? <clears throat> Am I a bad person for never having heard of the movie Brazil? Like, I yeah. was so no. confused by that. Yes. Yes. It, I've never yeah. heard kind of that movie. What's it about? Br Brazil. It's, Brazil? It's, I don't know what Is it's it about. about. No, but Nobody what knows it what it's about. It's about dystopian future, cyberpunky kind of. Huh. It's it. it you, I, you should watch it. Commentary. He did a whole bunch of coke or something. That's how I got the fucking. But, uh, but I you know, will tell you this, Jack. Brazil. Plot. Brazil is a movie not to be watched without substance. Oh, okay. No problem. Very trippy. I disagree Very with that. You understood? And it's in and feel like you took some. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. It's it's. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's got it's got a Robert De Niro in it. It's got the, it's a Monty Python. It's, it's not a Monty Python heard, movie. Monty Python. Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam. But it's got it's got Terry, Terry Gilliam. Gilliam. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So Iron Man Ghost or Bus Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jack. Yes. You get the point. 
Ghostbusters. One Ghostbuster ninety seven percent. Iron Man was ninety four percent. Yeah, so I collect Mike four Jack takes bonuses. the point. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, Paul. Which one was rated better on Rotten Tomatoes, Alien or Aliens? Wow, that's tough. <laughs> that's like a <laughs> fucking shot in the foot, isn't it? <laughs> You're asking to put me to really, really put my personal preferences in the trash can. You're right, yeah. <laughs> and, and take a dump Absolutely. on them and light it on fire. Point, point of order yeah. and uh, clarification here. Uh, is this... Um, the critics, or is this the people? This is or Rotten Tomatoes ra- ratings. So, so the critics. So it's the combined I, rating, right? Yeah, oh, I, combined. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. I am going to say Alien, although I'm probably wrong. No, I like okay. that answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. All right, Paul. Unfortunately, it was Aliens. Aliens was 98%. Uh, Alien ranked only 97%. And I will tell you, I like they. them both for different reasons, but I liked Alien better myself. I thought it was a better yeah. movie. Yeah. God damn, it's a much tighter, tighter, tighter movie. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was. It was. And, and, it, was, can, and, it, was, and it was revolutionary in a lot of ways. Yeah. All right, it. Matthias, you're up. Yes, sir. Back to the Future or Jurassic Park, or was it a tie? Oh, crap. Um, I'm going to say Jurassic Park is Jurassic. the highest. Good answer. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, Back to the Future took it at three whole points, 96% Ugh. versus 93%. Well, I think we know what an endorsement from me gets you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In the top 100 movie, still a loser. All right. At the end of round one, uh, we have Mike with zero points, Jack with one point, Paul with zero, and Matthias with zero. Jack, you're winning for once. Yay. Woo! This game is fixed. All right. So we're back we're back to Mike. Uh, Mike, Groundhog Day, one of my favorite oh. movies of all fucking time. Love that play. Love that play. Versus, Dave, did you know that they have a horror movie coming out that's basically like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Oh, I, Happy I, Death Day. Yeah, Happy yeah, Death Day. Yeah, I'm gonna see it. I, it's probably gonna be shit, but I'm gonna see it just I because. It's good. I understand. Yeah. It's okay. Good. Cool. It looks good. It looks good. All right. Well, so you've seen The Edge of Tomorrow, right? Yes, I liked Edge of Tomorrow. Only this one, she starts out as the high school girl and ends up with uh, buff being Buffy by the end of it, is what I. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. All right, so Matthias, Groundhog Day or Lord of the Rings: The Two that, that Towers? Was, uh, excuse me. That that's gonna be a. Uh... Or a tie. It could be could be one or nope. the other or a tie. Wrong person. So this guy. You got the wrong. You got the wrong guy. Uh, so this guy, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Guy. Was it Mike? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Pardon me. My yeah. bad. Sorry. It's all right, buddy. You're doing a good I, job. I don't want that one. <laughs> no, I accidentally had clicked on Matthias. And, yeah, I'm, I'm oh God, me neither. Sorry. Okay, so er, um, yeah, so you got Groundhog Day. Right, the, the, the Two Towers was the second one, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. I think that one did, out of all of them, I think that did the shittiest. It has and nothing to do with that, money. It has nothing I, I, to do with I, money. But I, I think that uh, I'm going to go with Groundhog Day on this one. Groundhog Day? Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike. It was a tie. They both scored 96%. Oh, 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 give Mike the tie. Give him the right, tie just... every time. Fuck you. All right. Got you. I got you on the next one. Oh, <laughs> it's, just, it's mainly a guessing game. I know, I know there's no skill to this game whatsoever. So anyone watching, right. like, you can't. It's a straight up guessing yeah, game. As, as Laura Nicole would say, no whammy. Oh, there's a whammy. All right. <laughs> all right. Jack. Jack, you're up. Jesus uh, Christ. Doctor Strange versus Gravity. Wow. Hmm. That would be a great porn name. Doctor Strange versus Gravity. <laughs> As he that gets older, a... right? Is it, is it like one of those yeah. old, like old man films? I'm sure I'm sure Doctor Strange's balls are battling gravity every day. <laughs> As are as are all of us. But uh I'm going to go with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange? All right. No, I'm sorry. Gravity, that piece of shit, beat Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is a far better movie. It's a way better movie. 
Mm. This I'm telling you, Rotten Tomatoes is broken. All right. <laughs> no, this game is broken. <laughs> what? Come on, man. All right, Paul. Repo Man versus District Nine. Ooh. Oh. oh. <laughs> you know, there needs to be some adjustment for inflation or something. Yeah, this is, this is just wow. Um, uh, we're saying Repo Man, not Repo Men, correct? No, no, Repo Man, the Emilio of Estev Estevez. Yeah, yeah Punk the shitty rock one. Yeah, no, yeah. fuck yeah. you. Get off my I, show. I, I, <laughs> I'm Go fuck yourself. Tie. I'm going to say tie. You're going to say tie. All right. Good answer. Tie. Good answer. Oh, God. Nope, my boy, Repo Man, 98%. Yeah. That's oh, that's ridiculous. That no, ridiculous. it deserved it. No, it deserved it. I like that film, but... but yeah. uh, it's a great movie. Oh, man. Yeah. I, yeah. But District 9 is fucking awesome, too. Anyway, Whatever. All right. Great yeah. All right, I, Matthias. Uh, oh. The, the Terminator versus Blade Runner. So, how does Rotten Tomato work again? Is it at the time it's put out, or is it like over time? No, it's over time. Over time. Over time. That's Blade Runner. He's Blade Runner. I think so. Okay. All right. Not a good. I'm answer. sorry. It was the Terminator. Terminator oh. has 100. percent What? Yes. Really? Terminator. Everybody likes oh. Terminator. Yep. Come on. Terminator oh, everybody. scores perfect. Even Blade you. Runner. You didn't know and it, but you did. And here's the bullshit. <laughs> Blade Runner, ninety percent. Nah, I'm like, go fuck no, yourself. No, Come on, wrong. man. Right, <laughs> no, right. Seriously. People have no. All class. right, Mike. Huh? Pan's Labyrinth versus The Dark Knight. Oh, mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good answer. Good answer. Yeah. answer. Right. That's a fantastic answer. Thank you. Maybe it's the right answer. Right, you know? because here's here's the problem with this one. You have like the critically acclaimed, you know, like I, I couldn't even get through Pan's Labyrinth. I know it might be her heresy to some people, but I was like, actually got two critically thing. acclaimed films. Yeah, and they, but they are. They're yeah. both like, yeah. So, so the probably, mm, I don't know, a tie. Probably Is that what you're going for? Tie, going for a tie. Def definitely a tie. Yeah. All right. So tie. you had you had two ties in a row. All right. Yeah. So you think it's yeah. gonna be number three? No, I don't, but I'm just being me. <laughs> I got to be. Why not? Sorry. It was Pan's Labyrinth, 95 Fucker. to 94. <laughs> this it doesn't is... matter because I would have gone for the Dark Knight anyway. So This game is really fucking hard. Damn. All right. So, Jack, Jack oh, Wonder Woman versus Mad Max Fury Road. Oh. Two, like, feminist movies, I think. Hmm. Hmm. I know which one I, I liked better. Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, oh, God. Fury Road was I, like such a great movie. I fucking and love I haven't even that seen movie. Wonder Woman. And the soundtrack um, for Fury Road is is unbelievable. Did you say Furry Road? Fury Fury, <laughs> Fury Road. Road. That's a completely <laughs> different Mike, one. Mike, Mike, Fury Mike goes down <laughs> Furry Road. <laughs> right. That. Yes. I think that's. Uh, I think you can catch the Hershey Highway from that road. Uh, <laughs> that's a, Speaking that's of the bag Bell. made oh. by David Benavides, his skin. <laughs> oh, God. After Chipotle, skin really bag. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Mad Max because, God damn it, I love that movie. All right, Mad Max Fury Road is the winner. Ninety-seven percent to yeah. ninety-two percent. Wow, Jack's got another point. Right. Jack's what? What? Fuck that bitch. Basically, Two points on the board. Yeah. They're both jacks. They're both jacks, yeah. right? Hashtag this yeah. game is... Because of the law of averages. Yeah. And statistics <laughs> and probability. Because All right, Paul. Here's your last open. chance to get a point. The 1981 <laughs> Evil Dead versus Spider-Man Homecoming. Evil Dead. Okay, Evil Dead. And Paul gets a point. 95% to 92%. Uh, we and are playing golf you, scores, aren't we? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> We're playing golf scores? No. No. Matthias and I are right. tied for winning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthias, here's the last one, and this is going to hurt. Empire oh. Strikes Back versus 2001 A Space Odyssey. Was it Empire, Space Odyssey, or a tie? I'm going to go for a tie. Tie. All right. Huzzah! It was a tie, both at 94%, wow. both way too fucking low. 
I yeah, agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Way too Especially with Terminator, Terminator at 100. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah that, that is. Know, right? Straight up bullshit. Who, who was that? Was that Matthias? Yeah. Yeah, that was Matthias. So Matthias got a point. Jack's got two points. Paul got a point. Who didn't get a point? Um, yeah. All right, so our final score is... Final? Uh, is, what the shit it? biscuit? That's the end of the <laughs> game, man. I got your tie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right here, buddy. What? That's what, Mike? What? What? Mike, is there a problem, Mike? No, not at all. I'm oh, happy. like this is the first time you missed getting a point, the point until it was too late, right? Hey, <laughs> you know what I love? You know what I love? That what uh, do you love? I love that now that now that Mike is not controlling the game, he gets to see how fucking hard it is to play in the goddamn games. It really <laughs> <sucks. the> games <laughs> tough. <laughs> All right, so what, what did you guys think? I mean, that's pretty much just a guessing game, right? I just thought it was interesting because you get to see. I mean, it's a fun game to. It, it's an interesting game to play in that. In that you get to see how things were rated on Rotten Tomatoes. I I don't know. I mean, yeah, winning has nothing to do with skill. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> however, we do. We have to do this. We have to do this. Uh-oh. Hey, Jack. Yes. You get the music. Oh, thank get to, you. You, get, thank you. you rarely get this, so I got to make sure that you get it. <laughs> it is so rare that I win. All right, Jack. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank um, you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, that is that is our show. Uh, oh. Any any final thoughts before we wrap this bitch up? <laughs> Did a great job, Pete. Great job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Except for that beginning part of the game where you criticized me. But, you know, I, I did, fair enough. What? what you, no, 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 no. It's fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, no, no. I didn't no. know what. That was no, not I gotta, criticism. I was merely I trying fi- to be a supportive uh, role. I, I guess, hey, trying to make the trying to make the, the show better. <laughs> no, no. I didn't know that was going to happen, but apparently now I do. I need another monitor. I need another fucking monitor is what it is. It's happening again. What's that? The, the thing with the you can see it on the board all your what you're reading live on facebook yeah that is because uh, yes i'm just you know i'm i'm being know, a helper i know i'm I being know. a helper that's all i'm doing <laughs> helper. oh my god how do i fix that i don't you know, know. Quality Pete production i can't no. <laughs> let's do wow. hey, man, i can do i can hey, do uh for the record, <laughs> when I did the game, we just kept score on a piece of fucking paper, all right? <laughs> I mean, I, whatever. I'm, I'm trying to make it better, man. Come on. Bastard. <laughs> you, you're so hateful. No. <laughs> all right, everybody. Let's wrap this shit up. Does anybody else have any last words? Anything else? Paul, what, uh, what's coming out next, Paul? What do, what do you got coming up? Uh, Gare's Inferno, which is a, a modern... A modern uh, story following an arson investigator who finds a uh, a strange symbol at a fireside and starts to realize that that symbol has been showing up at fires at other places for over a period of time. It's um, urban fantasy suspense, I guess, is what you would call it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should be out uh, end of this month or first couple weeks of December. Oh, fantastic. Oh, so it's like a serial arsonist, huh? Yes. Captain okay. Crunch did it, right? Captain <laughs> Crunch. Yeah, but there's but there's got to be more to it because you're saying urban fantasy, so it's going to probably get deep into like some crazy shit, right? Well, I will I will say this: if you've read the Garaga books, mm-hmm. you are probably going to find some enlightenment. Okay. Okay. Light, light, as light as you light in. And Matthias, you got uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what was it? Zero. Um, zero day. Zero, Zero day, war. day, Zero Day War, a fantastic. When does that come? Do you have a date on that yet? Uh, January twenty sixth on Kickstarter. Fantastic. Yeah. So when's uh, Cuba Death coming out? Uh, mm-hmm. Cuba Death is that is February. Uh, I think I have a date. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be February tenth on Q, on uh, on Kickstarter because, uh, or or maybe. 
It's 30 days from when Gary Khan, the last day of Gary Khan, because I, I have this, I have this whole strategy, I have this launch and 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 um, ending strategy. I'm gonna do a, uh, a campaign wrap at Gary Khan. I'm gonna do a campaign start at a gaming at a local gaming store, at a local you know one of your local gaming stores. So I'm gonna do live video of us playing it as it launches, so people can see people playing it and stuff. And then at Gary Khan, we're gonna do the same thing. And then there's gonna be a mid campaign bump at TotalCon where I'm going to be running the game. I'm going to do live stream there of people being able to see it. So I think uh, my goal is is for people to see, you know, like if they're looking at maybe backing it, they literally going to see people playing the game and having fun. Because cool. uh, I've been told that you don't sell things with facts, you sell them with emotion. Get huh. people to... Right. Get people to like love something and they'll fucking buy whatever. They'll buy a turd from you. So, and I. That's why we felt this show with sadness. Yes, right. That's right. Exactly. And, and, uh, I, and I got to tell you, I believe in this game as every game designer does. I know you, you probably like, oh, my game is the greatest game ever, right? I liked it. Yeah, right. <laughs> I no, got guys, Come on, I still like it. Stop! No, look, you're gonna sell this game, right? This is how you go. It is the greatest game ever. It's the greatest. Just say you gotta it. say it like this. Oh, it's God, the greatest no. game ever. Ever. You say it's ever. greatest game ever. ever. No it's one. Great. Has... Everyone came out. Everyone was here. I was <laughs> hoping one. Right. right. There's no one who hasn't played this game. Everyone in America has played this game. Even the Europeans have played this game. I don't like them, but they've played it. <laughs> right? No? Not so no much? No. no? Okay. All right, never mind. Don't listen to me. All right, everybody. Let's, <laughs> let's wrap it up. Let's uh, let's do the... Blah, 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 blah. Here wrap we up your yodel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop choking your Jordan. <laughs> my Jordan. Yeah. Rapping on my Jordan. Jordan. All right. No, no everybody, you... You are choking the Yoden. Oh, God, Yoden choking. You just enjoyed another... Jesus Christ. Another awesome episode of the Mythwits. And this one... Oh, my God. Catch... <laughs> fucking catch us live on Facebook. Monday's at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guest questions and make snarky comments. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episode at YouTube. Mythwits! Uh, find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos as if and make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you can listen to us on the go at mythwits.podbean.com or whatever your podcatcher is just put the search in do the like follow subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate please give us a bunch of stars and a review on itunes make sure to check uh check check check, check. make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread mythwits over the entire planet mythwits is part of the tsr podcast network check out tsrpn.com uh, we are a Creative Commons product. Like and share in all the places. Just don't edit it. And yeah, don't sell it. Cause, and don't if you edit do, it because we sure don't. <laughs> 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 if, you, if you, <laughs> don't make it funny. God damn it. <laughs> Don't make it interesting. That, that would be our budget, Jake Ballard. Oh my God! So, so make sure to check out Steve187.com for more stuff that's not edited and goofy. Uh, join our mailing list, please. Thank everybody. Thank you everybody for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. Until next week, Mike. Uh, God, that's so gross. I just threw up in my mouth. Yeah. Oh God. Uh. Yeah, but did you make 25 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> no. Sadly.